In this video, I want to go over how to trade the S&P 500, whether you trade options of SPX or SPY, or if you trade futures of the E-mini or the micro E-minis, every concept I'm going to explain in this video will help us get better with technical analysis on the S&P 500, grow a small account, or grow a large account using these techniques. I also want to say everything that I'm going to go over in this video could be used with any market, any stock, any future, or any option. This is how the market auctions and how we facilitate trade and the strategy I'm going to go over in this video can be relatable no matter what market you trade in. Before we get into the strategy, if you're watching this video and you have not already followed me on my Instagram, take two seconds, click the link in the description below. I recommend following me on here. I post daily trading recaps along with really good trading tips and tricks that I could guarantee you're not going to find anywhere else on the internet. The link is in the description below. You're really missing out if you're not following it. So the first thing that I look at when I'm doing all my analysis on a daily basis, when I'm formulating my plans, I always know in the back of my head that specifically the S&P 500 is one of the highly liquid markets in the world. And because of this, it's a very mean reversion type of market. Now, what this means is the market essentially trades and tries to find value, locate value. Do we accept value or do we not accept value? And if the market goes too far out of value, most likely we are going to revert back to the mean or the average price or where the most volume is or where the most time was spent with that market. So because of its highly liquid nature, and I know in the back of my mind that most of the time we revert back to the mean, I need to ask myself first, is the market inside of value or are we finding value? So looking back on a higher time frame chart, this is a three hour chart on the E-mini futures. If you trade SPY or SPX options, I recommend doing all your analysis on the futures chart of the S&P 500. You could see this on any time frame, small or large. The concepts will apply because it's how the market auctions. So looking at this chart and this green highlighted box, it's safe to say the market has found value, meaning we are balanced, we are consolidating, and we are not moving up or down outside of this range. We are inside of a range where the market is balanced and inside areas that we have value, there's usually a high amount of volume traded at a specific price. And there's also an equilibrium between buyers and sellers. What formulates value or what formulates consolidation or a balanced range is you have, okay, buyers are accepting this price to be fair and okay, sellers are accepting price to be this fair. The market's a tug of war battle. So when buyers and sellers are fighting it out and not one side has the advantage, most of the time value will build and we will balance out and consolidate. So pretty much the whole month of April, the market was inside of balance and we were trading inside of value. We were not finding value, instead we were inside of it. And because of this, we have to trade differently intraday. Now the market cannot stay inside of value forever because then it would not be a fair market and there wouldn't be unfair prices, which is why the market will move sometimes. So there's gonna be a lot of times and this is gonna give us clues about a potential trading scenario where we move outside of value. So when we do this and a new value tries to form, you need to ask yourself, are we accepting prices lower or higher or are we not accepting prices higher or lower? Now in this example, the market breaks down outside of balance and we do not accept prices outside of this fair value. So think about it from an auction standpoint. Sellers who have sold somewhere inside of this range, hopefully above value, now as the market comes out of value, you want to see the market to continue that direction for continuation to the downside and those sellers will be happy. A very concerning factor is if we break outside of balance or outside of value and we do not locate new value on a smaller time frame or a higher time frame. As I mentioned earlier in this video, what I'm explaining could happen on a short and a high time frame perspective. The market breaks out of this balance range or outside of value and immediately reclaims back inside of value. As you can see here, we come back into this range when we got a very large rally. Now from a short seller perspective or a seller in the market, 
This lack of acceptance or lack of follow through shows initiative action from buyers and most of the time we are going to come back into value and break the upper balance range or outside above value to see if we can find new value outside of a range that once was value in this area. So the market gets that rally, it gets that reversal, and this could have been an indication that initiative actions at the lows. And these next two days, I want to focus on playing longs as long as pullbacks get bought up on an intraday level. Now the market breaks and comes back to break the upper balance high or the upper value high, and we immediately fail. And now this day there's initiative action from sellers saying, okay, the market's trying to locate new value outside of the previous range and we're getting a lack of activity, a lack of acceptance, and a lack of volume. We are not accepting it. Now the market most of the time will reverse to an area of previous value. Now to put the pieces of the puzzle together, let's go over the pre-market plan. I post these every single day in my Discord of setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and potential trading scenarios. So as I'm recording this video, it is May 14th, and I wanna go over the previous week because the market was inside of value, and I wanna go over how you're supposed to trade inside of a range. The most important thing from this pre-market plan is 4167 to 4174 supply. The second most important thing will be this 4150 to 4142 range. And the third most important thing is going to be this 4130 to 4122 range. Now every day I post the levels I'm watching, scenarios, and it, everything that I'm going over in this video, subconsciously I know it. It's not so much I think so much of it, it just comes to me by looking at the charts and analyzing it every single day for the past seven years. So here are the levels, the supply is above, the demand is below, and inside of this green box, the middle green box, is basically what I called value of last week. We must now look at the bigger picture context. Is it going to continue with that trend or are we going to see a reversal? This goes back to my first point about the S&P being a mean reversion type of market. So if it's a mean reversion type of market, continuations are less likely to occur. Whereas you have a lot of breakout traders not understanding the concepts of this auction. So because of it being a mean reversion type of market, trend continuations less likely to occur, whereas reversals happen most of the time. Now you need to ask yourself, for a trend to continue, we need to see that value getting accepted outside of that range. Non-acceptance means most of the time we are gonna reverse. Acceptance usually means that trend is going to continue. Now we need to look back at the chart and understand where the structure is, where is the range. Where is price currently trading at? And where has price traded in the past, whether it be yesterday or whether it be last week. So now going back to last week as I'm recording this video, probably two weeks by the time you see this, the weekly picture is a very balanced range. Now when the market is balanced, you want to fade the extremes. You want to be shorting the highs and you want to be buying the lows. What I see a lot of people doing is they see the market rally. They see it coming up, a nice, very large green candle, not understanding what I've went over so far in this video, and they are longing a breakout on a mean reversion type of market, which I do play breakouts on these types of markets when the conditions and the context fits. But a lot of people are not aware of this context and they are longing at an upper balance range or they're longing at an area that the market has not found value at it yet or are moving out of value and trying to locate new value. And they're trying to get in before the move. If this market did rally up here and instead of it coming down, let's just ignore this, but let's just say the market came into this area, we consolidated and then shot up, then this would be an area I'm interested in taking the market long or on the way up on this breakout, if the buying volume supports that, then I would also be interested in taking the market long. However, you should be shorting the highs and buying the lows, especially if value is not accepted. Because every single time last week we dipped down below the range, I saw a lot of people shorting a breakdown after an extended move when the market is still in mid-range and it hasn't went out or located a new value area. On top of all this, this is the cherry on top of the cake. You need to have the cherry or else the cake's not gonna taste good. You need to understand the context intraday. 
What is volume? How is volume? Is it high? Is it low? An hour into the session, are we below the average? Or two hours left until the market closes and we're 50% below the average volume? How is participation? Is there interest in the market? Are people buying at lower prices? Are people selling at higher prices? Where is price trading? Where is volume? Where are we building? Where are we spending a lot of time at? Where has price traded at in the past so far intraday? Here's a plan on the S&P 500 and scenario number two. I always have a bullish bearish plan every single day because we never should have a bias and we should never be, oh, I'm so bullish or, oh, I'm so bearish. You got to go where the structure is in the market. Scenario number two was if we can act as resistance at that 4142 to 4150 range, I want to play the market short targeting the demand zone lower. Now, intraday perspective, this day was very flat. We were very choppy. Volume was 50% lower than the daily average. If I see that there's two hours left into the market being open and we're at, let's just say, 800 lots traded that day and the average is like 1.5 million, then you have to switch how you trade because the volume is low, which bleeds into the volatility going to be low. There's not going to be a lot of momentum and you're not going to see large price movements. So a day like this where it's very choppy and we come into our levels, this sell-off was only for about 10 points. You got to take your profits fast versus a day where there is a lot of volume, where there is a lot of volatility and there's a lot of interest in the market causing up and down price swings. So you got to recognize the context in your day and all the points that I've explained so far in this video are so, so key and they go through my head every single day subconsciously. I don't have to think about them so much. It's more of just recognizing it and reacting to it, but you must be aware of it and you have to trade differently for certain conditions. Last week or two weeks by the time you're watching this, I saw a lot of people, let's just say shorting a previous day low, uh, here's the previous day low. They were shorting a previous day low break. Yeah, it might've worked for a couple points, but they got squeezed eventually because they are not aware of the conditions and the adaptation that you must change to fit the market conditions. So I think I'm gonna end it on that note. If you enjoyed this video, let's try to smash that like button. It helps spread this message to a wider audience. Let's try to get 1,711 likes. Comment if you have any questions and definitely check out the links in the description below. The Discord room is only available for Investitrade course members. It is included with the course membership and I will be raising the prices very soon when I add these new videos. But peace out.